Hi guys, Jay Smith here. Welcome to the Ask Golf Nut channel and welcome to Mizuno Pro 241 Full Review. Now, normally this is the point where I sit in front of the computer and talk about the tech. Now, when you talk about 245, it's hollow body and it's tungsten and it's got tech. When you talk about the 243, there's micro slots and stuff like that and it's got tech. This is the blade and there's not much tech in the blade, although there are some few things to talk about. It is still the same 1025E grain flow forge, lovely material that um, Mizuno have made their forgings for for quite some time. It has got the copper underlay. Now that's first started MP20 and same the 2.2 series. The copper underlay is there to try and quiet it down, make it sound even nicer. They have changed the design, so it's more of a centered mass. So if you look at the back of the golf club, you can see the fact that they've taken away from the toe and taken away from the heel and put it firmly behind where the golf ball should be here. It is slightly thinner, smaller, more compact. Although if you look at the specifications, guys, some of the differences are literally less than a millimeter. So I wouldn't get het up about the differences too much. They're getting too small. There is a slightly increased bounce angle on this. So of course, everyone knows we've got loft, but the sole angle, we have bounce. Now Mizuno historically have been a fairly low bounce manufacturer. So adding a degree or so throughout the whole entire set really makes no real difference whatsoever. And of course you have got that full brushed satin finish. I'm not a fan of it, I'll be honest. I don't like it. I'm a purist, I like chrome. And so for me, a blade needs to be chrome. Now, again, that's just my opinion and you guys down the lens, you'll have your own opinion. One thing it does do is if you wanna blend this with 243, if you wanna blend this with 245, it's the exact same finish throughout the whole entire set. So you will not have any differences by going for a chrome 241 or then going to something, it won't, it will look exactly the same all the way through. I'm gonna be doing the test with the Project X 6.0, the DNA heads, the fitting heads, why? Because I've got my media samples, there you go, here they are, but I've done the 243 and 245 with that shaft. So for continuity purposes, I will use the same shaft and use the same head from the DNA kit, two degrees up. And then when it comes to the fun bit, I'm gonna do the forgiveness side like I always do at the back end of the video, but I will also do a gapping. I will do a gapping, I've got the five, seven, and nine in my media samples. And obviously this is elite players. These for the players out there they want consistency, etc. And so I'll do a small gapping session to see exactly how well these gap, if they've got continuity between the set. And obviously, yes, yeah, go get the old simulator on. Let's go see how well this does into a green. Right guys, simulator is now on. We're at Potter's Park Golf Course, hole five. It's a par three of 170 yards, but it's down by 16 feet. 16 feet is around about five or so yards, 5.33 yards. So I'd expect it to go around about five yards further. I normally hit my seven iron, which is basically like this, 34 degree. Oh, 164, give or take, carry, and so, that's about right. Now, the 241 top line is just nice and thin. It has got a bit of chamfering at the back. So the center of gravity on these ones, you can see Mizuno are moving the center of gravity vertically to try and encourage a more favorable flight. Of course, on a blade, center of gravity is higher up anyway, but as soon as you have loads and loads aloft, the last thing you want to do is balloon them up in the air. So they move the center of gravity vertically anyway. Sole thicknesses are nice and thin. Blade lengths are small, not ridiculously small. They're small but it's like less than a what, 0.2 of a, a millimeter. Yeah, I won't worry about it. Right, um, let's go give this one a hit into a green. I haven't really warmed up yet, so this could be quite interesting. And I'll do the forgiveness testing like I normally do at the back end of the video. And then I'll also do the gapping because that will be a bit of a fun difference. Right, this green is ridiculous because I'm aimed for the pin um, and there's not much room to the right hand side of this. So left is the miss. Absolutely it is, right. Let's get the old body going. Down by the golf ball, again, there's not a lot of offset there, if not hardly any. It's the smallest fraction, but it just does look such a very, very nice golf club. And welcome to the first miss strike of the day. We have one right at the bottom of the golf club. Done really well, actually. All the green goes that way, does it? As you can see, not the greatest of strikes. Eight mil low, two mil hill, so not brilliant. Uh, path and face were very good. Face was baby open, that's why it's finished 1.9 yards, right? The main thing there was a strike. It's 31 yards in the air and 49 degrees ascent angle, not bad considering it wasn't the greatest strike in the world. You can feel it. Now, one thing, I mean, I've done some testing this already, I've hit it a few times, and one thing I can say, I'm not saying it feels worse than 2-2-1. It doesn't, it feels out the middle, it feels 
just as nice. If not, you could argue marginally, because I have done some things with the acoustics. It is slightly different to 221 and it's an acoustics. It's quieter at certain frequency levels, but you feel the feedback far more on this one. So when you don't hit middle, you do feel it more. Now that's a good thing because obviously you need to know where middle is to be able to practice properly and then obviously get more efficient, get more consistent. It's just, there's a distinct difference in feel. When you don't hit the middle, you really can tell. It doesn't make a real difference in efficiency as such or forgiveness from the point of view of hitting distance or not. You just feel it. You definitely, definitely feel it. That's how many times I'm gonna chicken out to the left today. That one's straight at it. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't want to go right, I really don't. Great shot, I mean, you'd take that all day long, really would do. Strike was good, three mil toe. Path and face were a little bit cutty. Again, I've got the, uh, I'm worried about going to the right hand side. But 36 yards in the air, 51 degrees ascent angle, spinning well, six six. You're gonna get it from these, these are blades. They're gonna perform subject to what you do. If you don't put a good strike on it, you'll get away with a certain amount on these and I'll do a few forgiveness bits and pieces afterwards to see how much you can get away with or not. But it just feels nice. The 241, it's a blade. It's going to feel really quite nice. Now that wasn't plumb on. That can feel is very fractionally healy. I mean, it's great, don't get it wrong, I'm being uber picky 1.3 across face is 0.1 4 mil heel that's what i'm saying you can feel it now i i mean that's ridiculous how you can feel four millimeters but you can on these things game improvement irons are designed with being so forgiving that you can hit it quite a interesting amount from the middle and get away with it and you don't really know where you've hit it with these things you gain ultimate feedback as soon as i hit it I know exactly where I've hit it. Not quite fully warmed up yet, 89 miles an hour, but again, it's just really nice. There's me favoring the left a little bit more. Again, chicken and out on the right. Still a great shot. You take that into this green. Two mil low, four mil heel, good strike, path across, face slightly open. Again, me favoring a little bit of the cuts should we say i don't like going too far right on that one uh 165 on quad 169 carry on because obviously we're hitting slightly downhill but 165 is about one yard or so more than my standard but i mean it's just doing well it feels lovely it really really does mizuno do know how to make nice very nice blades oh wow that was, there you go, look at this. <laughs> Wasn't expecting to do forgiveness testing. That's just one of them shots. Path and face, perfect. Look at that strike. And so that's what happens. If you do that with a game improvement iron, you will get away with it more. You're gonna get on this one, efficiency drops massively. Everything drops massively. Carry drops around about, well, it drops a good golf club distance. That drops to my kind of eight iron distance. But there you go, 149, yeah, on, on quad I just saw there. That's my eight iron. So a extremely poor hit with a seven iron will drop to about my eight iron, which is normal, I would say, when it comes to a blade. You are gonna get penalized if you do that. And they pop in every so often because we are human. The whole idea is we try to do our best to hit the middle whenever we can. Fractionally high on the face, I'd say about one millimetre and zero mil left and right. Decent shot. <laughs> the green, look at that. That is harsh. Two mil hill, zero mil high. Well, I'm fractioned out, but I mean, I'm millimetres out. Uh, club path was slightly across and face was slightly open. Efficiency's back up there, obviously, because of the strike was better. Me concentrating a bit more. 35 yards in the air, 35.4 yards in the air, and 51 degrees descent angle rounded. It works just well. Right, so. Let's hit it all over the face, not just in the middle and the occasional weird one. Let's whack it a little bit randomly to see how well this works off center hits. And also let's go do a gap test. Let's go see how consistent these are. Remember these are elite irons. And so they're gonna be wanting to be used by the player that wants consistency and understand exactly how far it's gonna go. They don't want any weird yardages as soon as they change the lofts around. So let's go see how well the 241 gets on. 
Let's go see how the Mizuno Pro 241 got on when I hit it all around the face as a forgiveness side of things and also out the middle to get an understanding of how it works in the middle because obviously if you're going to be testing the outsides and weird and wonderful spots in the face, not just low heel, where that shot come from I don't know on camera, um, but if you're going to be testing you need to know how it works out the middle and then obviously measure what happens when you hit it all around the face. And I've also done a gap test as well, so for the players out there that are looking for consistency and uh, predictable distance gaps between their irons, I've captured a gap test as well to see how well it does, how consistent effectively its distances are. Right, let's go have a quick look at how the averages go. The Pro 241 ball speed on average 116.9 miles an hour, launching at 20 degrees, which is bang on for a 34 degree lofted uh, blade effectively. Spinning at 6130, so just over 6,000, going 35 yards in the air and 50.4 degrees ascent angle at 167. Um, I enjoyed the hole so much that I literally just been hitting on camera. I kept it on there, just basically kept on hitting. And so this is where the information comes from. So slightly downhill, five yards too far, that kind of, you, you get it. Look at the uh, clubhead speed, 88.7 miles an hour, 1.32 efficiency on average. But remember, this is a blade. So effectively, if you're going to miss this by a little bit, there is going to be um, movement, shall we say, in its efficiency. But 4.3 down is my attack angle and slightly across and slightly open is my pattern for for today, 0.4 degree down and 27.7 degrees of dynamic loft delivered, a zero mil toe, three mil low, and I've got stand deviation on everything to see. Let's go see what happens when you kind of don't hit the blade out the middle, but first we need to measure what happens when you do hit it out the middle. We've got one right out the screws here, 89 miles an hour, 1.33 efficiency. That is basically all you're going to get out of a blade, but it's zero mil low, zero mil heel, 1.33 right out of the screws. Slightly heel not as much as we saw on camera, 11 mil heel, zero mil low, so just a normalized heel miss, 1.31 efficiency, same loft delivered. It's good, just doing really well, 35 yards in the air and 50.4 degrees ascent angle, even from nearly half an inch off the heel. If you go slightly low heel, not as low as we saw on camera, six mil low, eight mil heel, 1.30 efficiency, even with a slightly uh, fade bias delivery, you call it 2.3 across and 1.5 open, loft basic exactly the same again and 1.30. Remember that's only 0.03 from absolute perfect and we've got a slight, shall we say, fade dynamics and also a low heel-ish strike. I mean, you can definitely, definitely feel these. One thing this golf club does in spades is give you tons of feedback. It lets you know exactly where you hit it. 10 mil low, three mil heel, 1.28 efficiency. So we are starting to lose efficiency, obviously, when we start going 10 millimeters low. 10 millimeters low on a blade is a lot. Bearing in mind, because remember, when it comes to a blade, the center of gravity on a blade is naturally higher. When you're looking at a game improvement golf club with a huge sole and all of the weight just rammed as low as it possibly can do, vertically, the center of gravity is lower. So you can get away with low strikes on the face. You can't so much with a blade. So efficiency's dropped, but look at the launch. I mean, that's done really quite well. That's still launching at 20 degrees and spinning up at 5'8", even from a poor hit such as that. If you go low toe now, seven mil low, five mil toe, just a normalized low toe, 1.30 efficiency, only 0.03 off of absolutely perfect. It's just really quite good. Uh, 10 mil toe, three mil low, just, again, just a normalized toe hit, 1.31. Everything, loft is exactly to the point one of a degree, exactly the same as the maxed out one, and it's only 0 0.02 off, 1.31 efficiency, 35 yards near, 50.6 degrees ascent angle. It's just doing really well, but these really aren't misses, guys. We are, we are moving around the middle, so we're not surprised it's doing okay. What happens when you push it a little bit? 16 millimeters toe, one mil low. Now that is now starting to become very much so more of a distinct miss, especially on a blade and 1.29. Everything else is pretty good. I am de-lofting very fractionally, let's be honest on this one, 25.5 degrees of loft rather than 27.7. So it's two degrees uh, less loft I'm delivering. Will artificially increase efficiency. You have to be open about that. But it's doing fine. It's going 31 yards in the air and 49 degrees ascent angle. It's still hitting the number, give or take carry wise. I am de-lofting it slightly. So it is launching two degrees lower, but it's getting there and it's still stopping. And that's quite, I mean, it's, it's a very, very, very good iron. It's just quite sensitive as a blade will be when you hit it not just margin off the middle, but as soon as you start moving off the middle by quite a lot, it will let you know 
distinctly that you need to make a better job of it. <laughs> so let's go to the gapping to see how well it did. Let's go to the ball and club compare screen so you can see it. And you can see straight away, you've got the blue being the fast swing 241 uh, five iron, the yellow being the seven iron 2417 iron, and then the nine iron being the red. And so you've got 137 yards, 164 yards, and 191 yards. So 137 to 164, what's that? 27 yards yep and then I normally have about 13 yard gaps between my golf clubs at my speed and so you change speed and then there will be automatically a different gapping anyway you change lofts um, but keep the same speed and automatically there's going to be it so it is very very unique for individuals but there has to be a certain pattern of how fast you're swinging or kind of what lofts you need there's no point you swinging really really fast and having very very aggressive big loft gaps because if not your gappings between golf clubs will be massive and completely unusable on a golf course no different to if you're a very 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 slow swing speed golfer and you have traditionally lofted irons and there's only like very small loft gaps between them then you're going to find up that your golf clubs bunch a heck of a lot but then again if you look at the seven iron and five iron what's that 27 between there so within reason it's bang on perfect you cannot complain about these whatsoever um one fun one i did have on there if you um put all of these shots in there to showcase my variants what happens you can see they're all going the same um, height with all of them they're basically all going 35 36 yards in the air and they're descending even the five iron that's still descending at 46 i think it was degrees so it's doing a really good job of coming into a green and still stopping and you can see the variance as soon as i start taking the loft off generally speaking of course it will with everybody your variance will start going left and right especially uh, that's normal it will go into the shot map so you can actually physically see that is my grouping i think i'd done something like 12 or so 14 shots may have done with a five iron and then so as, as soon as you go into less loft your variance starts to increase a little bit so hitting a few more shots gets a better rounded average but there you go so are they consistent absolutely they are they're blades and they work very very well all the way through again this is very much so when it comes to speed and delivery dependent so depending on obviously how you deliver and how fast you swing you are going to get different results of this so this is the importance of having a proper fitting now a lot of the fittings are only done with seven iron yes they are but depending on how you swing and what kind of launch monitor you got your fitter very much so can use the information which you are showing to say look this is where i wouldn't be going any more than say a six iron or whatever it would be for you and that's when you need to go into a hybrid because what happens is if you just keep punishing all the way through into five irons into four irons you'll find they start bunching very much so and then the old classic thing is why does my five iron go the same distance as my four iron or why does my five iron go the same distance as my six iron conclusion when it comes to the two four one uh, looks from its lines i really like it i liked i loved the mp5 and so this is not to say as a copy of it but it's very much so down the old route of mp5 and i really really like the lines the feel of it it just feels just lovely that 1025e that you're going to get from a mizuno with that copper underlay just makes the blade just feel gorgeous to hit when it comes to performance it performs exactly like a blade does and you're not surprised exactly how it works when you hit it out the middle when it comes to forgiveness if you don't hit out the middle it's all right as long as you don't miss hit it by much if you go too low on the face and if you go too healy and if you go too toey of course it's going to tell you that you need to do a better job the one big gripe I have of the 241, and it is this. I am a purist. I am a traditionalist when it comes to how things look. They should be chrome. In my mind, they should be chrome. And I don't like the 241 on the basis of that hasn't got chrome. It is that one thing that would stop me putting these things in the bag right now. Now, the question mark would be, could you polish them up? But no, the whole idea is... The 221 looked great because it was chrome. For me, the 241 doesn't because it's not. Now, other people down the lens there, that's the great thing with subjectivity. Everyone has got their opinion. And for every individual, they are right. Just because I like something does not mean that you should like the same thing. The main thing we're talking about is performance. That is not subjective. That's actual. When it comes to the likes of feel and looks, that's completely up to you so hope you like the video if you did thumbs up go on youtube's like so do i down there it's a subscribe button it's great for the channel it's free so thank you and next to that one is a bell icon that's a notification bell if you click that one that will let you know next time i upload another video so i hope you well and we'll see you again soon